Hi there and welcome to National Applied Biology Unit 1 Cell Biology and the first key area. So Unit 1 is divided up into six key areas and we're going to start off with number one which is cell structure. This has a look at four different types of cells, what they have inside them, what the function of these are and we will compare the four cells as well. So in National Applied Biology you can be asked to compare or state the organelles present in four types of cell animal cells, plant cells, bacterial cells and fungal cells. So we're going to start off by looking at the structure of an animal cell. So in your animal cell you start off with around the side you have this structure called a cell membrane. Working around from the right this strange almost oval like object is called a mitochondria and the little black dots that you often find are called ribosomes. In the middle of the cell, often coloured black, is the nucleus and the jelly-like liquid that fills in the gap between all of these is called the cytoplasm. So for now, I'm going to go through the structure of the four types of cell. And I don't want you to worry too much about what these different structures do, I just want you to concentrate on where you find them in the cell and what they look like. We'll discuss what they do later on in this lesson. So you will find these are all the structures that are present in an animal cell. Next we move on to a plant cell. Now the plant cell contains all the organelles we've just looked at in the animal cell, but there are some others that are unique to plant cells as well. So. Starting off from the right, we again have these ribosomes that are dotted around the cell. Next you have the nucleus. It looks slightly different in this diagram, but usually it's just a black dot found in the cell. We also have the cytoplasm, which is the space between all of these different structures. We have the mitochondria that we've looked at previously as well. And then we move on to something a bit more unique to plant cells. So these chloroplasts are what makes the plants green. They're often shown by green dots in the cell and they're responsible for photosynthesis by containing a pigment called chlorophyll. It's a good way of just knowing straight away that a cell must be a plant cell if they have a chloroplast. Related to that is the vacuole. So this big structure in the middle of the cell is called a vacuole. It contains cell sap and again it is unique to plant cells. So if you have a diagram of a cell with a vacuole in it and you are asked what sort of cell this must be, it must be a vacuole. Moving on, we have a structure that was not present in an animal cell, which is a cell wall. This is the structure that is around the side of this cell. But inside from that is a cell membrane, which we have seen in the animal cell. So again, the plant cell contains cell membrane, ribosomes, a nucleus, cytoplasm and mitochondria that we have already looked at, but they also have a cell wall, vacuole and chloroplasts as well, which are not found in the animal cells. Moving on to bacterial cell, which looks a bit different from what we've looked at before. It again has a cytoplasm, which is just a space between all the other cell organelles. There's a cell membrane in this also, and instead of a nucleus, bacterial cells have rings of genetic material that are called plasmids. So again, if you're asked to describe what sort of cell this must be, straight away you will know it's a bacterial cell because it contains a plasmid instead of a nucleus. Again, there are these ribosomes we have looked at, and another object that is unique to bacterial cells are these bacterial chromosomes. So this strange ribbon-like object in the cell as well is again some other genetic material but is not a nucleus. And as with the plant cell there is a cell membrane but there is also a cell wall that is in the bacterial cell which we did not find in the animal cell. Moving on to the final cell that you'll need to know is the fungal cell. I like to try and think of the fungal cell as an animal cell with a cell wall because everything else is the same. So there's the cell wall that I've mentioned. So again, the only cell that does not have a cell wall is the animal cell. There's that nucleus we spoke about as well, ribosomes, a cytoplasm, a cell membrane, 
and hopefully by this point you can recognize a mitochondria. So like I said previously, it's an animal cell or looks like an animal cell with a cell wall. Often in questions you'll they will talk about yeast cells. Yeasts are a form of fungus, so a yeast cell is a fungal cell, just in case that confuses you at any point. So again, you need to go through these, look at the diagrams, copy them out, and try and use this table that I've included at the bottom of the slides to remember where you would find these cells, uh, where you would find these structures of cells, and compare the four different types of cell. As well as knowing the different cell organelles and what cells you would find them in, you will also need to be able to identify, name and describe the function of all of the cell organelles that we have discussed. So once you're comfortable with remembering what organelles are found in which cells, we need to remember what these organelles actually do, why they're there. What I'd like you to do is to copy out this table um, and what we'll then move on to in this lesson is going through each of these organelles and what they do and where they are found and try and fill this in and learn them. So we'll start off with the cell wall. So as I said before, you find the cell wall in all of these cells apart from animal cells and their role is to support and strengthen the cell. Now, I've noted here that it's freely permeable and we'll come to that term a bit later on, but all you need to know just now is that it allows everything to move through it. But the point of the cell wall is to support and strengthen the cell. And an important note is that it is made up of a structural carbohydrate called cellulose. If you think cellulose says cell in the word, just try to remember that is what it's made up of. It comes up quite a lot. Next on that is the cell membrane. So the cell membrane is different from the cell wall in that it is selectively permeable. That means that some substances can come through the cell membrane, but some can't. Now this is quite an easy one to remember because they are found in all four types of cell that we have looked at. Something else that is found in all of the four cells is a cytoplasm. Now this space, that jelly-like substance that's found between all the different cell organelles, is the location of chemical reactions within a cell. There's lots of reactions that take place and they all take place in the cytoplasm. Next is the mitochondria. Now we came across the mitochondria in the animal cells, plant cells and fungal cells, but not in the bacterial cells. Now the mitochondria is very important as it is the location of aerobic respiration. We will look at aerobic respiration later on in unit one, but for now, all you need to know is this is where ATP or energy is made in the cell. So a very important cell structure. Chloroplasts that we spoke about earlier on are green because they contain chlorophyll. This is where photosynthesis takes place in the plant cell. And again, you will only find them in plant cells. So straight away, if you see a chloroplast, you know it is a plant cell. Similarly, the vacuole is only in a plant cell and it contains cell sap, it is also useful for supporting the cell as well. If you see a vacuole, it's a plant cell. Ribosomes are found in all four cells that we have looked at, and they are location of protein synthesis. This is where proteins are made. Again, we will look at ribosomes and protein synthesis in more detail later on, but for now you just need to know that this is the location of protein synthesis. Plasmids are found in the bacterial cells, so a good way of identifying a bacterial cell straight away. They do not have a nucleus, they have plasmids that do the same job, they're the location of genetic material. And speaking of nucleus, we find these in the animal cells, plant cells and fungal cells, but not in bacterial cells. These control most cell activities and are where the genetic information is stored in a cell. So, I know there's a lot of information there, so please go back through all the information, pause it, make sure you're learning it, make sure you can compare all these types of cell and you know the different structures and what they do. I've included here what the SQA want you to know from this first key area. So as long as you know what the function of all these structures are, you know the structures, you can describe them, you can uh, point them out in a diagram and you can identify the different cells, you'll be totally fine with what we need to do. What I'm going to do next is there's going to be a selection of past paper questions 
I will explain them. Once I've explained them, I'd like you to pause the video, answer it, then I'll go through the answer. In this first multiple choice question, you have been given three different cells, P, Q and R. The question is asking you to identify the plant cell or plant cells. So A is P and R only, B is P and Q only, C is P only, and D is R only. Pause the video and give it an answer. Okay, so hopefully you should have realised that the correct answer is B, P and Q only. This is because by looking at the cells, P and Q both have a cell wall, a cell membrane and a vacuole, whereas R only has a cell membrane, so it cannot possibly be a plant cell. The key thing to look for, again, is the vacuole. Sometimes people look at P and think those must be chloroplasts around them, so Q is not a plant cell, but if it has a vacuole, it is a plant cell. In this next question, you have been given structure X. Now, although it would be useful for you to identify what structure X is, it wants you to tell you what the structure X is actually made of. Starch, cellulose, protein or phospholipids. Pause the video and I'll go through the answer. So, hopefully you can identify that structure X is the cell wall. And in doing so, you'll know that the cell wall is made up of cellulose. So the correct answer would be B. Similar to the last question, you've been given four different cell structures, A, B, C and D. None of them have been named. And it asks you which part of this cell is composed of cellulose. Pause the video and I will go for the answer. Okay, so this one should be easy by uh, looking at the previous question but you should know that B is a cell wall and that cell walls are made up of cellulose. In this question, there are two different parts. The first one is to identify the type or types of cell which have a cell wall out of animal cells, plant cells, bacterial cells and fungal cells. In the second part, you have to identify the type or types of cell which have a plasmid. Pause the video and I will go through the answer. Okay, so for part A, you should hopefully remember that an animal cell is the only cell out of these four that does not have a plant cell, a cell wall rather. Therefore, plant cell, bacterial cell, and fungal cells have cell walls. For part two, you have to identify the type or types of cell which have a plasmid. You should remember that a plasmid is a unique feature to a bacterial cell. So a bacterial cell has a plasmid. And for this final question, you have been given a structure X. You have to identify what it is, but you also have to say what the function of the structure is. Pause the video and I will describe the answer. So hopefully by looking at this diagram, you should know that structure X is a mitochondria. So important for you to know is what the mitochondria actually does. And hopefully you'll remember that the mitochondrion is the site of aerobic respiration, which should be answer C. Once you've went through these and you're happy with the information and the past paper questions, go on to quizzes, attempt the questions that I have added for 1.1 cell structure, and then we can move on to 1.2, which is transport across the cell membrane.